Welcome back. Uh, this is part four of the C++ tutorial, and we're going to cover the introduction to variables. Okay. So just in case anybody doesn't know what variables are, uh, we'll try to compare these to like a, an algebra equation. Yeah, because we, we kind of uh, assume that most people have taken some sort of algebra class, and that's where most people learn about variables in a very simple math class. So we created a very simple little program here where we're going to illustrate how the variables work. Right. So we have uh, a variable named x, a variable named c, and a variable named y. So if you store a certain variable as x or c, make y equal to the value of this equation. Right, so in this equation here, y equals 3 times x minus c. So x, whatever uh, I type in here for x, will affect this x. Whatever I type in here for c will affect c. And whatever these two values are will affect the outcome of y. Right. So let's just do a simple basic. Right. We will so we'll set x as one. One. X equals one. Okay. So now, the, anytime you see the letter x, it really means the letter one. Right. The letter. The number. I one. mean the <laughs> right. We'll make c equal one. Now I'm going to select calculate. All right. So we can see in our heads three times one is going to equal three. Minus one is going to equal two. So now we can kind of visualize how these two variables are going to affect the outcome of y. Let's do something a little bit more. Right, so we'll change the contents of container x. 20. Okay. And then this will be 3.14. Uh, so now we're, we're dealing with decimals. Do you All like right. that? All right, fair enough. Calculate, yeah. All right. So, so the, the, if you set a variable to equal some number, it's changeable. It's not, it's not constant. Right. It's variable. It can vary. So that's, that's the basic concept of what a variable is. All right, now we can take this concept, now that it's fresh in our head, and let's apply it to C++ concepts. Okay. Now that we're back in dev C++, let's create a new source file. So we're going to click on the source file button here. And uh, let's practice writing a, a simple C++ program. So okay, so what we'll do is we'll pretty much write the same program that we were just using to illustrate what a variable is. So I'm just writing... Hopefully you've studied and had this memorized by now. This is the simple framework of a C++ program. Right. You should be you should be typing this in your sleep. Right. And just to test it real quick before we go, F9. Mm -hmm. Ah, and then we'll save this one as variable. Z. That's CPP. <laughs> Hopefully I'm spelling that correctly. All right, program works. Ryan, talk to me, buddy. Okay, so what we have is um, maybe let's put a comment just so we can you know, keep note of what we're doing. And we're basically going to do y equals 3 times x minus c. And with order of operations, we know that multiplication comes before subtraction. So there is no need for the parentheses. We can put those in there to make it look neater. But it's not necessary. OK, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to identify the fact that we're going to be using variables and what the names of the variables are so the computer can build these containers for us to put numbers in. And not only that, but what kinds of variables they are. Right. The data type. Which is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. And we'll go over that later. So for right now, all of the things that we're going to be dealing with are going to be integers. So mm -hmm. to define an integer, it's just int and the name of the variable. An integer is a whole number. Uh, it could be negative, it could be positive. As long as there are no decimal places, it is an integer value. Right. No fractions. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the integers that we're going to be using is uh, integer x. Okay, and in the next line, we'll do another integer. So we're going to define them in two different ways. So now we've defined it a single integer on one line. Now watch this. Now we're going to define y, comma, c. Because they're both integers, we don't need to keep saying integer, integer, integer. Right. We so we could, we could essentially have x, y, and c on the exact same line. But mm -hmm. just to illustrate how you can do this, uh, I did it this way. The reason why you, you might want to set them up on single lines is it makes it a little bit easier to read the code. And plus, you can set them to values in the right. beginning, uh, which is always a good idea. Because if you don't set your variables to values, it's going to be just garbage data. Mm -hmm. the piece so if you accidentally use the variable before anything's stored to it, it's just going to grab whatever happens to be sitting there in memory. Right. Whatever sp uh, place in memory that the computer allocates for this variable is going to be data. It doesn't go in there and erase the data before it uses it. It just says, all right, now this block of memory is going to be used for this integer. And whatever happens to be in there, the integer value of that is going to be what x equals. Right. And that could totally screw up a program. So before we go any further, why don't we see out x and y and see what comes up. Okay. 
So watch this. We'll do C outs, X, and we'll concatenate them. Right. We'll do a space. See, we can do this. You guys know this stuff now. <laughs> y, end line. Let's run this, F9. So we got 0 and 72. So the spot in memory where Y was allocated just happens to be 72. Right. It could be 1954, da-da-da-da-da, a whole long thing of numbers, or it could be, you know, you never know. So just keep that in mind when initializing variables. Right. All right, so what are we doing next? Okay, so what we'll what we'll do is let's set x to equal one, like we did in the in the example. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we're gonna set uh, c y to uh, equal zero for now. Just make it nice and pretty like this. Semicolon. Uh huh. And we'll make c equal to one, two. We'll do one. That way we can All right. replicate that first example that Sounds we did. Sounds good. So we're basically just, you know, going to use the the basic uh, plus, minus, and uh, the asterisk for times, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll use those to replace the value of y. So the way we do that is y equals, and our command. So let's do uh, right three times x minus c. Right. And then what we're going to do down here is why don't we do c outs, and we'll maybe we'll see out uh, the the out the equation that we have. X equals X. Right. Then we'll do a new line. And then we'll type Y. We'll do lowercase. Y equals and then Y. And then you guys know what we can do now, right? I'm sorry, not Y. C C and then end line y ah smart guy <laughs> and l then y equals I don't know why my fingers are so slippery today so this should work right let's run it real quick before I sit here and brag about it f9 yay okay so if x is 1 and c is 1 y does equal 2 yeah, good times. So this is basically the same program that we had before. So if we want to change x to 30, and we want to run it again, y is now equal to 89. Dun, 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 dun. Yep, 30 times 3 minus 1. Right. And so that's, uh, that's the basic introduction to variables. And in the next section, we'll be covering the different types of data types.